Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to go over making a big bore. We're going to bore out and sleeve the CS800 cylinder for that CS8000. The finished bore is going to be 56 millimeter, but this first go around 56 millimeter bore, we're going to use the stock intake and stock exhaust so it'll look exactly like a stock saw. Should take it from 80 to 93 cc's. So we're going to gain about 13 cc's displacement. And hopefully it stays together long enough. But I'm going to show you what all goes into getting to this point. All right, here's the echo cylinder, CS8000. This is bored just at a quarter inch over. We'll sleeve it. And we're going to try and make this 56 millimeter. You can see some porosity in the casting. Broke through the transfer ramps a little bit. Some more pores over there. None of those go to daylight. And the sleeve will seal all that off. So we'll get this cleaned up. Get a sleeve made. And uh, heat it up and drop it in. All right, here's that CS8000 cylinder that we bored out, and I'm going to make a port map out of it. Just a piece of paper, nice healthy pencil, cut it in, make sure it's fitted up tight to the bore, then you just scribble over all your ports and you get a nice outline. It's exhaust, transfers, intake. What we'll do, once the sleeve's finished and cut off, We'll cut out these ports, wrap this around the sleeve, butt up the, run this flat to the top of the sleeve, and then we'll be able to transfer these ports onto the sleeve. But I think uh, since this is the first go around, we'll just put small holes in to locate these, probably at the bottoms of all these ports. That way, we'll just match them once we're done. But that's what the port map looks like. Board out cylinder again. You can see we broke through the transfer bridge a little bit, but that should be all right. See a couple pinholes that were hiding under the plating. So now that we got that map done, we'll throw the cylinder in the toaster oven and get it nice and hot. All righty. Put the cylinder in our easy bake oven. 400 degrees for a few hours. Want to make sure that cylinder gets heated all the way through. And we need that temperature differential. So we'll work on the sleeve. Bye-bye, cylinder. All right, we'll just clamp this in the vise real light. Couple pieces of aluminum, not distort it. Use a small end mill, and we'll just poke a couple holes. Just to get us started. All right, he has some starter holes in. Clean it up real good, then we'll throw it in the freezer. You can see the Easy Bake's doing its thing. 
We're getting some heat out of the cylinder. Ought to clean up real nice. See just a wee bit of smoke coming off. And there's the sleeve. Got that all cleaned up. All deep bird. So this will go in the freezer. The sleeve will fit ever so right next to the brownie. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. Been cooking in the oven for a few hours. So it should be right at about 400 degrees. We threw the sleeve in the freezer. It should be good and cold. So we're going to attempt to send this home. That is toasty. Oh, top. Which one? Which one? That's the exhaust. So you should know those are transfers. <laughs> what are you doing? Ball no, that did not work. <laughs> Shut up. There it went. Yeah, I broke it back up. Mm -hmm. Cylinder expanded plenty. We had plenty of room. But what happened was, I think I had it, well, I know what happened. Had plenty of room, it allowed, without having something to hold this cylinder, and having all the room from the cylinder being hot and the sleeve being cold, it allowed it to tip. When it tipped, it got locked into one of these lower transfer tunnels. Because going at everything all crooked, when I tried tapping it around, the sleeve chipped out so we continued to and this is what we have left bunch of sleeve pieces and we're just going to start over with a different cylinder but that's all part of the fun seeing what will work what won't work that's what happened sleeve went in crooked snagged on the lower transfer here and here Right there. But this is only the second time. We'll try a little bit less press and we'll put it in a little bit slower next time and hopefully that works out. The exhaust port facing me. it it's pretty close in line all we can do is hope that it works <laughs> don't work bad. Don't work bad. oh yeah all right um we'll shut the oven off but we'll set it back in sorry all right through the sleeve back in the oven so it can slow cool been in here for a while now Cool to the touch. That's where the transfers will be. Intake. Exhaust. Everything looks good so far. See just enough of a hole to leave a witness. Now we'll have to set this back up on the boring machine. 
get it close to our finished size of 56 millimeter. Then we'll hone and polish it to fit. Being an iron sleeve, I'll probably give it about three and a half thousandths piston to wall clearance because that piston will heat up quicker than the sleeve. After the other fail, it sure feels good getting this one together. And no marks. So we'll finish this up. Now we're going to bore out the iron liner. That was the first cut. We'll see how it looks. And got about 30 thousandths more to go. Don't look bad at all. There we go. Not too bad of a finish. That's about five thousandths undersized. That should give us just enough to get rid of all the tool marks and size for the piston. So we'll get this honed up. Then we'll finish all the ports through. Uh, eight parts kerosene and a little bit of oil. One part of oil. All right, we got about two and a half thousandths to go, which is the clearance that we need. So you can see that this piston will just slide in. So we'll finish up our clearance. Everything's looking good in there. Then we'll be able to lay it out and get the porting done. I'm checking everything with the dial bore gauge. You set these with the micrometer to the size you want. Put it in, touch off. Rock back and forth till you get the size. This is a half thousandths increment. So you can see we're about two and a half thousandths past the zero. So that would be the bore size. But you got to rock to your high, which is right there. So I'll do a little bit more honing. Check it out. Let's see if we can get it right on the money. Let's do it one more time. Oh, that piece looks bigger than it is. All right, everything's looking pretty good. We'll have to see if that did it. All good there. Money, 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 awesome. Awesome. A little bit bigger out here on the extension, but that's to be expected. Everywhere important on the bore. It's right there to size. We'll get this cleaned up good and take a look at it. There's the finished bore. I said we need to tune up the squish band. Just need to finish all the ports. Tune up the squish band, finish all the ports. I guess we could chop the head off and put some valves in it, make it a four stroke. But that sounds like a lot of extra work. How much bore size we're going to add? It's four millimeters. So like I said, this is a 066, 660 big bore. They use 12 millimeter pin. I'm going to wait for the 13 millimeter piston. And... While we're talking about boring and sleeves and everything else, I think this one will be up fairly soon. We'll get this one sleeved. This will probably be 50, 50 millimeter probably for the CS590 through 620s. Finally get this put together. And just to say we did it. <laughs> 